Hi, Facebook world. How are y'all doing? I got on just a little early to go ahead and get set up, make sure I was together. So um, anyway, I um, am excited to be doing this live today. We're going to be getting really deep in this vulnerability stuff. So um, I uh, can't wait to hear what God has for us and what he's going to say to us. So I wanted to get on early and go ahead and get my little stuff set up so that I wouldn't be late for our four o'clock time today to hang out and talk. Hopefully you guys have gotten your copy order. This is the writer's edition. So don't look at this part, but the book is out. So hopefully you have gotten your copy. Hopefully it is on the way or you've got it on your ebook. And I definitely, definitely hope to be able to sign your book, sign your copy. So hopefully you've gotten your copy of Purposeful Pain. She is out everywhere. Hard copy. Um, this is this is her. And um, the prayer journal is out as well um, on Amazon, uh, Drive to Digital. Um, it's e-reader on Barnes & Noble. Um, but if you want the actual hard copy, you can get it through uh, Amazon. So I'm super excited that my child is finally finally here. It's been a long road and um, some way, somehow I made it. So I'm definitely, definitely excited about that and definitely excited about the book. I've been hearing some really great things. I've had people uh, text me, family members reach out to me and tell me how blessed they have been by the book and by the the content the content in the book. So I definitely have been really excited uh, about all that God is doing. So anyway, I wanted to tell you guys that it's out. Thank you for supporting me. For those, uh, those of you who have read it, if it can bless someone else's life, gift them with it or tell them about it and get them uh, involved with the movement. Hey, Chastity. So, um, so anyway, it's four o'clock, so I'll, I'll hop in. I know people normally drag in or they uh, watch later. So for, for all of my wonderful uh, later fans. Um, so the topic today is called Get Out of the Way. And I came to, <laughs> came to that title of Get Out of the Way because God literally had to tell me to get out of the way. And so... I was like, okay, God, um, I guess I can get out the way. And so anyway, I was having a, a situation with God. Hey, uh, Raymond, happy Father's Day to you. I was having a conversation with God. And, you know, sometimes I feel like if God could just send me the tracking number to my blessing so I know when it's on the way, I would really be happy. You know, like you ever feel like that sometimes? Like, you know, God, I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to work it out for me. But, you know, it would just really be so much better if you could send me a tracking device because I'm really trying to find out when is my, like, when is it going to arrive? When is my blessing going to get here? And so I was talking to God about that and just kind of trying to figure out, okay, God, when are you going to do that thing that you do so well, which is make all things new and really show up for me like you, like you do. And so anyway, God said, well, I'll show up for you when you get out of the way. Like, are you going to let me do this or are you going to do this? And I was like, God, you don't think that's kind of petty? <laughs> like, you know, you don't feel like that's just a little shady that, you know, you only going to do something when I when I get out the way. And so he had to remind me that I can only do my best work when you're not standing in the way. And if you're standing in the way, blocking my view and blocking my ability to orchestrate the things that I do well, then how could you ever expect for me to give you those things that I do well? And so it was very eye opening to me because I'm very type A personality. And so I like to be in control. I like to, um, hey, Shauna, I like to be in control. I like to, uh, you know, I want to know, like, when you doing this, you know, like, the, the worst thing and the hardest thing to do is be, you know, 
knowing that you received a, a word from God, knowing that a blessing is on the way, and then you have to sit and wait for the blessing to arrive. Like, and you know, it's not like Amazon. You know, Amazon, when you order stuff, you know when it's going to arrive. You know exactly what time is coming. You know exactly what time, you know, God, you know, your, your package is going to ship. So it's different when you're waiting on an online purchase versus waiting on your blessings from God. Both of them give you a word. The word is like, uh, we're going to ship. But then you're like, well, when? Like, when, when are we going to ship, God? Because, you know, I've been... I'm tired. Like I've been waiting a while and we ain't shipped yet. So when we, when is this blessing going to ship? Are you going to send a tracking number on my blessing? Cause I need, I may need a tracking number. And I just felt like God needed to send me a tracking number for my blessing. And so he was like, no, I don't need to send you a tracking number. I just need you to move out of the way so I can do my job. And so when he kind of got me together about it, it made me think about why is it that we oftentimes find ourselves unable to get out of our own way. And a lot of it has to do with vulnerability. Really, all of it has to do with vulnerability. And um, hey, Angie, you know, and so when I really thought about it, God was like, first of all, you got to get real about who you are. And what you expect me to do in your life. Because the most times we find that we really struggle when um, we want God to do something, but we want him to do it our way. Because we always want to do what's comfortable. You know, naturally, we want to do what's comfortable. We want to we want to be safe. We don't want to. You know, we don't want to do the work. We don't want to go the route that he has most times because we both we all know it's going to stretch our faith. It's going to uh, change the way we see things It's going to uh, make us not operate in the things that we typically get to operate in that brings us comfort. And so because of that, we find ourselves a lot of times not wanting to submit to God because then that means we have to begin to get real about the things that we've hidden in ourselves. And so, hey, hey, Miss Marcia. Hey, Tony. And so because we are like that and we don't like to get vulnerable, it prolongs the process of when he can allow our blessings to ship and then arrive. And so he talked to me about getting out of my own way and that really the things that were laid up for me were still there. You know, one thing about God is what I love about him is that he doesn't mind. He doesn't change his plans. But a lot of times he has to change his methods. And the reason that he has to change his methods is because we change. You know, God gives us free will. And so a lot of times, you know, because he gives us free will, we have an option and a choice. And sometimes we don't choose God. You know, sometimes we choose our own selfish, selfish needs, our selfish flesh. We choose the things that make us feel good and the things that validate our flesh, but not the things that validate our spirit. And because we don't choose things that validate our spirit all the time, we find it very, very hard to stretch in the things of God. And so, you know, God said to me when I was kind of worried about, okay, well, God, when are you going to ship my blessing? Because sometimes we find ourselves so worried about what God is doing that we're not about our own business. And so we're like, well, God, um, you know, I prayed to you about that bill being due two weeks ago and we got till tomorrow. He's like, yeah, but it's just tomorrow. And to us, it's like, no, it's not just tomorrow. It's like, like, this is pressing. Like, why do you not see that, that as pressing? But he doesn't see that as pressing because of what our faith is saying. You know, it's impossible to please God without faith and and with him, all things are possible with faith. So if you're not seeing things manifest as quickly as you thought it should or what have you, a lot of it has to do with what does your faith say? What is your faith saying about the things that you told God that you were going to believe him for? Hey, Miss Vanessa, you know, what is your faith saying? And so I had to faith check myself. Like I really had to go back to the book of James, which you guys know is my favorite book right now, that in first Peter and really examine 
what is my faith saying about this? Because if he said it, then I can count on it. He going to do what he said. Then why am I sitting here complaining, thinking that, okay, it's not going to come through this time. You know, he, you know, he probably just going to fail me. And, you know, our, our, because we are such a selfish person. Uh, selfish people, we typically always revert back to our default setting. And majority of us, the reason we struggle with faith is because people have left, let us down so many times that we just automatically default to whether you're going to let me down just like the others. But God and man are not the same because God told us day one, hey, man is going to forsake you. But what do we do? We still put our trust in what we felt like we could touch, what we felt like we could hold, what we felt like we could have control over. And so you can control a lot of things about a person, but their actions. So you can't control when he going to finally text your phone. (laughs) You can't control when y'all finally going to go on that date. You can't control when the money going to come from the bills. Like there's certain things that we can't control and Being in faith is all about not being in control and submitting to a power power that is higher than yourself. And so a lot of us have a problem doing that because we have been let down so many times before. But it goes back to faith checking. Were were you let down so many times before because you were trusting God or because you were trusting man? Because that that right there can help you figure out why you have such a a problem with letting down your guard, getting vulnerable in front of God and allowing him to do his work. You know, a lot of us don't realize that we can't, God can't bless who we continually pretend to be. And he shared with me in my, in my prayer time that a lot of us still think it's Halloween. (laughs) Like a lot of us still got a mask on. We still think it's Halloween. We dressed up like Barbie. Baby, you're not Barbie. We dressed up like, you know, somebody else. And because we're coming dressed as others, God can't bless who we pretend to be. He can only bless what he designed us to be. Whatever he called you when he designed you is all that he can bless. So we're out here trick and treating. Correct, Shauna. We're out here trick and treating. And... We doing more tricking than we are treating. God got the treat, but we ain't trying to knock on the door and say anything to him because we're too busy trying to show up as a pretend character and then get upset with him when he's not blessing who we aren't. You know, God does his best work when we're most, when we are our most authentic. Because when you are authentic, then he knows, ex- he knows that you're not walking around trying to be validated by people that don't matter. See, we have an issue with that because we're too busy trying to be validated. A lot of us, and I've, I've been one included, um, when you're not whole, you find yourself needing to be validated by people that don't matter, whether it's in your, in your job, your relationships, your friendships, we constantly find ourselves. We want to be at the forefront. You know, we want to, we want to, you know, we want a valet when we could really, when half of us can't afford a valet, we probably just need to park in the parking garage. But because we want to be validated, you think about what, what the word valet means. Valet means you want to be validated. <laughs> you want to be validated. You want to be esteemed. And because we want to be esteemed more than we want to be used as an impact, we decide to just go ahead and allow God to allow God to kind of like fizzle out because right now our flesh needs microwave love instant quick. You know, we want to quickly fall into some things. We want to quickly do some things, but James uh, chapter one reminds us that we have to let patience have her perfect work. But again, we don't want the process. We want the impact, no process. We want fulfillment, No, but we don't want to buy groceries. We just want to go to McDonald's. We're not really trying to cook ourselves. You know, we don't want to go through the process of which it takes in order for God to bless us. And so then we find ourselves when we come showing up in our Halloween costume and we're not understanding why God's not opening up the door and dropping candy. He's like, you, you're coming out of season. You didn't came up here with your Halloween costume on and want to, and want me to give you Easter candy. Uh, Well, which holiday are we celebrating? Like which, which one of these situations that you done set up on your own are we celebrating? And so 
Then we have the audacity to get frustrated with him when the truth of the matter is he's more frustrated with us because he's like, if you would just get somewhere and sit down somewhere. See, my granny used to say that all the time. Y'all need to sit down somewhere. If you just sit down somewhere, he could do everything you asking him to. You know, sometimes uh, we are, especially women, we are almost like naggers. You know, and you think about some of the women in the Bible that helped helped man to fall. They were naggers. In essence, here, you try this. Here, eat this. Here, here, Adam, eat that. Job, wife, why don't you just curse God and die? You know, Sarah, look, why don't you just just sleep with Hagar so that way, you know, uh, we can still go ahead and get this baby that we want. You know, we constantly, constantly just want to infiltrate our own thing. But then we're upset when God ain't blessing it. But you in the way. He's like, if that, that's why people say all the time, when you move, God moves. But think about it. When you move, that means it's creating space where he can move. The reason he ain't moving, because you ain't. You haven't given him 50 feet. He don't have enough space to do his job because you sitting over here, sitting on the, on the desk, eating Cheetos, looking out the window, crying about why God ain't showed up yet. He was like, well, if you just get off the desk where I'm trying to do my work at, then I can get up and do it. I, I can finish writing out this plan. But I ain't got enough desk space. Your booty is on the desk. I ain't got enough desk space. So how can I how can I even begin to give you all the things that I have in me for you when you won't even get out of the way? You know, a lot of us sometimes have road rage and we find ourselves yelling at the cars and stuff. Oh, God, they ain't looking crazy. Why they da, 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 da. They need to move out the way. Why are they in the fast lane? They need to be in the slow lane. Da, 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 da. And we find ourselves being so frustrated. And all we frustrated about is what? Them getting out of our way. And what we rushing to? That's how God be like, God be feeling like, well, what you, what you rushing to when you get this blessing? <laughs> you know, think about when you cut that car off and you're on the, you know, on the two way highway and both of y'all still end up at the same red light. Baby, you could have just stayed behind the car. You done almost risked your life and somebody else's for you to get to the same red light that you still got to sit at. You're quickly going nowhere. And that's that's how we are with God a lot of times with how he does things. We want him to quickly give it to us, but we'll be going with it. Are you ready to impact? Are you ready to get vulnerable? Are you ready to be real about who you are? No. So what you need it for? You know, it's like giving a, a eight-year-old, well, a, a 12-year-old these, these days, a cell phone or a car, better yet. What you going to give a, give them a car for? What they going to do with it? Where they going? Do they have a license? They not, they're not even trained to drive the car, but we trying to hurry up. Let me hurry up and save some money up so I can get my 10 year old a car. For what? That doesn't, that, that doesn't make sense. And so we're in our own way and we're frustrated with God because he's not moving fast enough, but he's like, I don't need to move. Cause when I give it to you based on where you are right now, you're not going to do anything with it. You're going to, you're going to revolt back to the default setting. And what, and what does that mean? That means you're going to be back to who you selfishly enjoy being versus who I called you to be. And so as he was sharing with me about getting out of the way and me getting out of my own way, he was like, I got this. All these things that you're worried about, that you are complaining about, that you're thinking are not going to come through, or maybe it will, maybe it won't. He said, it won't if you're thinking man going to do it, but it will if you think I'm going to do it. Because I told you that my word will not return unto me void. I don't care what the naysayers say. I don't care what, what people say. I don't care what the person that you're expecting to do it says. They don't even realize I can touch a man's heart like that and change his mind and have him doing things that he didn't even think about doing for you, that he didn't even feel like he wanted to do for you. And all of a sudden he's doing it for you. And he don't even understand why himself, why he doing half the stuff he doing. All he know is that he done woke up today with a wild hair and he just got to do whatever it was that you asked. God said, that's my doing. That's my doing. But we would much rather, you know, instead of us move out the way and let God be God, we rather be God. And see, the, the issue with God and us 
is that we like to get out of order. And so when we get out of order, we find ourselves um, making people resources that should be resources. We find ourselves making people uh, gods in our life when they shouldn't be at all. Half of them shouldn't even be in your life, let alone a God of your life. But because we have not healed and we are so busy trying to make sure that we don't feel the impact of the collision that we know is going to come because God has already told us man's going to forsake you, which means your heart's going to be broken, which means you're going to be disappointed, which means you're going to come up with negative thoughts. And then after you do all of that, you got the audacity to blame God for why he didn't come through. He was like, how am I supposed to park there? You already got your car. You know, you already got what you want. So how, how do you expect me to come and give you my best when you've already decided to take what you want? And so that just really hurt my feelings with God. Cause I was like, Hmm, well, I didn't, I mean, I didn't think about it like that. You know, <laughs> I was just trying to see if you was going to send out a shipping number for my blessing that you told me was on the way. He said, I did in sec in, in first Peter five and 10, when I said, after you have, after you have suffered a while, I was like, but God, what is a while? Because you're not like, are we talking about Webster dictionary a while? Are we talking about kingdom a while? Are we talking about earthly a while? Which wiles we talking to? He said, well, the while all, all determines on how, on how quickly you going to move that part. How quickly are you going to release to me? The things that you're carrying, the things that you want to control so bad, so bad. And you know what's so crazy is that we want to control stuff so bad, but we don't even do good with it in our hands. Like when it's in our hands and we're just trying to like clench it chart like that, it doesn't even do good. You think about people who crack pecans, how you crack the pecan for the country folk. You know, I'm from my blues. You know, we used to crack the pecans, but you got to. You know, put the pecan right here and you hold it real tight and you put another fist on top of it. Why? You you apply more pressure until it just cracks open. And one thing about cracking pecans open, sometimes they're good on the inside and sometimes they're not because you cracked it prematurely. See, the cracking happens, but you want to crack the pecans that are ready to be eaten. But sometimes we crack too early. And so when we crack too early, then we, then we trying to call God, like, God, can you, uh, what, what can we do? He said, well, what's your faith say we can do? Cause see, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So he always trying to faith check. He always trying to figure out well, what your faith said you could do. What did your faith? Oh, that was all your faith said. Well, what did your seed say you could do? What kind of seed did you put in the ground? Did you, do you know? Or are you just walking around placing seeds somewhere, hoping that it just works out like God is intentional and ever changing. He doesn't do things like he don't do like spin the bottle. Y'all remember back in the day you used to do spin the bottle with the little game. God don't spin the bottle and wherever it land, he just do. Everything he does is intentional. Every connection that he gives you is purposeful. Some people are in your life for a season and a reason and others are there for a lifetime, but it's your job to be able to discern which one is which and and so we put people that are temporary seasonals in permanent positions and they're mad they can't do the job and then we want to call on God then we want to tell God well God has you been there but has you did has you did he said no you wanted that old microwave relationship now I told you weren't going nowhere I told, I gave you all the red flags of why you need to leave that stuff right over there where you saw it and what you did. You had picked it up. Then not only did you pick it up, you cracked it. Not only did you crack it when you opened it, it was still rotten because it wasn't prepared. You thought because it fell on the ground that that meant it was prepared, that, that it must have been ripe. Just because it fall don't mean it's always ripe. Things happen and people fall. Situations happen and you happen to fall. It don't mean you ripe. It don't mean you're ready to be eaten. It doesn't mean that you are ready to be resourceful to the body. That's what that's what seeds do. Seeds seeds manifest into fruit that becomes resourceful fuel for our bodies. But every seed doesn't turn into a fruit. 
And every fruit ain't resourceful for your body. So we always have to understand, okay, God, am I in the way or like, you know, or is my, or is my lack of faith in the way? People don't realize that words are so powerful and what you say truly, truly, truly does matter. And so sometimes we say things out of frustration, not realizing that the more you talk negatively about a situation or about a person or about whatever, that's that prolongs God's ripeness for you. He's like, wait, I can't use you yet because you still showing up pretending to be somebody else. See, people that got time to focus on other people's issues all the time. Those people are actors and actresses because they're not showing up as themselves because they're too busy showing up as a commentator or a meteorologist or working for channel the news station. See, they can't be themselves because they're too busy being someone else. So you're not an anchorman. Why are you running my business? That part. Show up as yourself, sir. Quit show quit trying to show up as somebody else. See, that's why God ain't did what he needed to do for you yet. Because you in the way and you're not showing up as you. So God's like, mm I don't recognize you. Come, come again. Come back again. I don't recognize you. You said you, you said that you was getting your stuff together, but instead you still looking like the same. You got the same characteristics that you had the last time I dug you out that trash you was in. You still didn't learn and you still in your own way. And so now we see ourselves, you know, years in trying to figure out why this relationship isn't working? Why is this person not doing what we thought they should do? Why is it that, you know, things aren't falling into place? And God is still saying, but where is your faith? Bring me your faith. You know, it is no different from when people bring you things. You know, one thing about people, they always bring you what you don't ask for. You notice that? Whenever, whenever you ask stuff for people, majority of the time, especially if it's a situation where you done got caught doing some business, you ain't got no business doing. People always want to give you the tea that you don't ask for. That's when you know it's fake. Because they always ready to volunteer their lies. But what you don't know is some people forgive you just for being yourself. If you just showed up as you, we could forgive you. But because you showed up as as a D man and all the stupid mess that God didn't call you to be, we can't forgive that. And forgiveness is still the ultimate grace. But how can I forgive someone who can't show up as themselves? And so there's so many character issues and so many character flaws when we're unable to show up as broken. As sorry for what we've done. I mean, apologetic for what we've done. Um, when we can't show up as, excuse me, when we can't show up as, um, as hurt. <laughs> so it's like, God, you want God to heal you, but, but you said on your chart that nothing was wrong. So God trying to figure out well, what you at the hospital for. You said you ain't, you don't have a headache. You ain't got no nosebleeds. Your blood pressure fine. Your heart rate good. Then what you here for? If everything on that paper says it's good, then what you here for? Do you ever notice that when you go to the doctor? You go to quick care, right? They always, before they see you, they always make you fill out a chart. And they want you to do what? Disclose, right? You got to disclose everything about yourself. Disclose who you are. Disclose your medical history. Disclose um, what's going on with you today. Are you allergic to anything? You have to disclose so much. But... You do realize that even after you've disclosed all this stuff, they still check you. Like they still going to check your blood pressure, even though you say it's good. And you don't have no issues with that. They still going to put that thermometer under your tongue and check your body temperature, even though you said you ain't got no fever. Because that's how God is. He be like, okay, good. So you said you got your faith. It's not wavering. Uh, you whole, wanting nothing. Let me check your temperature. Let me tell, let me let me put my thermostat in the room so I can see what the temperature is. And then when he get in there, he put that thermostat in the room because numbers don't lie and numbers are the order in which we live and move. He know then that you ain't got what you needed to get. That you're not becoming who you should have became. That you're not remaining who he started what what and who he started in you. You know, one thing about walking with God that 
people constantly forget or don't even understand is that everything that God does is numerically sound. Life, our lives are based off of numbers. So because our lives are based off numbers, oh, ooh, Lord, I'm tired. Because our lives are based off numbers, numbers tell us exactly where to go, right? Highway 171, exit 36. They put words, but they always put numbers. And what I love so much about numbers is because they're so quick, easy, and straight to the chase. Most times we won't read the name of the exit. They'd be like, what, what exit that is again? Uh, exit 55. They don't read the word. We don't read the word to the exit signs. We just read the numbers because they're just so much easier. And But our whole life is ordered about that. You know, if you go today and say, Lauren, what time is your life? Four o'clock. Four o'clock is a number. What do you, you know, what do you want to eat today? I can tell you what I want to eat, but then the cashier is going to tell you how much it costs a number. Everything in our lives are governed by numbers and time. And so because it is governed that way, God is no respect to person. He governs it the same way. And so you have to understand his order and his reason and his whys of why he moves the way he does. But then that would require for us to get vulnerable and really, really, really get to knowing and understanding Okay, God, what are you doing? And so for me, because I wanted a tracking device on my blessing, I was like, God, I need the tracking number. He said, I got it. I gave you the tracking number. Where is it at? He said, well, it's in my numbers. In your numbers? What you talking about, God? Because you think about tracking numbers, most times they have more numbers than they do letters. Most tracking numbers have more numbers than they do letters. So I'm like, okay, God, what, what are we talking about? He's like, it's all in the new, in the numbers. So what we, what I've had to start doing is studying numbers. I need to know what number three means. I need to know what number one means. I need to know what five means because I need to know not what it means, but what it means to God because he operates in order and numbers. And so when you realize, okay, we're at seven, seven is the number of completion. So he's about to complete something in me that was undone. When you think about five, oh wait, five is the number of favor and grace. Okay. So he's about to give me favor and grace in that area, which I've been asking him for one, one is the number of unity. Okay. God's about to unite something that was separated. Okay. God, number 14 is the number of shifting. Okay. God's about to move and shift some things around in my life. So when you start understanding the numbers, you understand that he already and out the tracking. Uh, God gave me a word one day on May 17th that I was going to have a situation happen that I was going to encounter on May 25th. I said, God, 25? Why 25? Why would you tell me on the 17th day that I was going to have something happen to me on the 25th day? He said, oh, wait, because eight. It's eight day difference. Eight number of new beginnings. Mm, okay. 25, the number of double grace. Because five times five is... 25 and I was like mm, okay so I'm giving you double grace on that day to do what I've instructed you to do so when you start looking at how he moves like now I told my mom this morning I said mom um I need to sow a seed into William Murphy's um uh, church because I watch him every Thursday he always tells us to sow a seed and this week he did not give us a number he said sow a seed um, sow the seed that God is telling you to sow. And I'm like, okay, do I want 17 or 18? And I was like, well, I told my mama this morning, I said, well, mama, I need to sow because I forgot to sow on Thursday morning. I said, but I don't, God has got me in between the number of 17 and 18, and I don't know which one I'm supposed to be sowing. I said, but I can't sow just shit until I find out what 18 means. See, I intentionally sow. I don't, I don't just sew off GP no more. Now, these days, I intentionally sew because I need to understand, okay, God, me, what seed am I planting? And I think that that's a thing for us. You, I mean, like who just plants strawberry seeds, but don't know they're strawberries. Like when you plant a seed, you absolutely know what harvest you expect. Right. You know what fruit you expect to get. And so 
God's like, so why wouldn't you want to know why that seed? Because that seed is your harvest. We just, I, I tell y'all all the time, scattered seeds still grow, but they grow into what? Whatever you planted them in. Were you intentional when you planted it? Or did you just do something for the sake of saying, okay, God, well, I sold today. And you, you should be happy. Almost like you're doing him a favor. He's like, first of all, you should be happy that I'm even still standing in line behind you waiting for you to move out the way. Because I've been standing here for a while. You're not moving anywhere. You're still sitting there complaining about who did it and why. And why the people at your job not doing this and that. And why the people over here ain't doing this and that. And he's like, can you move? Can you move? You know, I think the most annoying thing you can do as as a driver is sit at the green light. (laughs) That part. Sit at the green light. And guys like... You know, you ever sit at the green light? How many horns blow when you sit at the green light? Now, how many horns blow when you sit at the red light? Even that is an order. Why is there only three? There only takes three lights to tell you what to do. Three being the number of resurrection. There's only three lights to tell you what to do. Stop, yield, or go. Look, God is simple in his ways. You know, I was sharing um, with my cousin earlier today. He and I were talking and I said to him, I said, you, you, you had to write a whole write up and, and perform a whole algebra equation when God was just trying to tell you two plus two was four. He was simple, but you done went and made a situation that it made you solve for X. And then it does, is it X two times? You got to go. You done made this thing. We, we make God so so, 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 so complicated. And God's like, I'm really not if you just get in my word. You will know where, where and when I'm coming if you just get in my word. But because we're intimidated by it and we don't want to stretch our faith toward it because we still dealing with that issue of well, what if this ain't real this time? We, it, the whole fear of it all just keeps us baffled and keeps us unlearned and ignorant. And so then we find ourselves frustrated because, you know, most people only get frustrated when they don't, when there's a lack of knowledge. You never, like in in my business, I'm a mortgage officer, so I talk about credit and processes a lot. But what I find is that people are never aggravated when they understand what the process looks like. People only get aggravated when they don't understand what the heck is going on and they're trying to make heads or tails with this thing. And so they, they, they're adding another light, baby. It's only three lights, red, yellow, and green. It ain't blue, yellow, green, and red, but you trying to add a blue color, baby. What does blue mean? Breathe. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. There's not the Apple watch, baby. When you get the notification, the blue notification on your Apple watch, say breathe. It's blue. God say, I, I just did three things on the stoplight, three things on the light, three things. You trying to add a fourth thing. I ain't even trying to do all that. I'm just trying to get you to understand when it's time to go, when it's time to yield, and when it's just time to stop. That's all I'm trying to get you to get. But you make it so hard, and then you don't get out the way. Because our problem is when we're not in the word the word and the will of God, we don't understand that the light change. We're still sitting there at the red light, distracted on our phones, didn't realize the light was green. And then we didn't have the pleasure of having somebody come up behind us to blow the horn and say, why are you still sitting here? See, that's what God does when he sends people into your life and he gives you those connections with people that have a a, a prophetic um, anointing is that's the prophetic anointing. People are people that are that are blowing their horn saying, hey, the light green. Why are you still sitting here? Why are you still sitting here? The light green. You can go. But instead of us going, we sit then. You know, not only do we sit, sometimes we try to run the yellow light. No, you ain't got enough time, but you're going to try to run the yellow light. Now you're in the way of the people who trying to turn, who light about to turn green. You're in the way. And that's how God sees us a lot of times when we're complaining and we're trying to get the tracking number for the blessing to see when it's going to arrive. Because, you know, we're trying to make sure we're ready. But don't you know that God is always going to make sure you're ready for your blessing? I tell people all the time, I don't concern myself with clients or people that are working with others or people that are doing the same thing that I'm doing, whether it's in uh 
the arena of mentoring like me or, 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 or uh, you know, writing or if it's in mortgages. There's enough to go around. My blessings got my name on it. I don't have to run the yellow light when God wants me to stop because there's a reason for the stop. See, we, we don't ever, you know, people hate being stopped. <laughs> That's the word, God. I feel that right there. People hate being stopped. They hate being at the, baby, you let that red light take too long. Baby, we so mad. Girl, this the longest light out here on Yuri. This the longest light. This is the longest light in Shreveport. But why we don't have that same energy when the light green? Don't nobody ever argue, girl, this is the longest. Girl, we can just go through this light. We never argue about that stuff. We don't get frustrated about that, but we get frustrated when God interrupts us. When he makes us to, makes us have to stop. Because, see, we don't want to process. We just want to go. And so we're frustrated with God because we just want them blessings to go. God, let them just overflow. Take Fill my cup once more. Just overflow me. Overflow me. He said, you ain't got enough on that saucer for me to overflow you. If I overflow you, it's going to be on the floor. Then it's going to be sticky. Then you'll be like, God, I show him people waste up on my floor. Then you nagging. And he's like, let's go over this again. Red, green, yellow, begin. Red, green, yellow, begin. What are we going with that? Why are you not getting that? It's not, you know, you and you think about order. Why is it that God don't let the light, the traffic light be yellow, green, and then red? You ever thought about that? Why he don't do that? Like he should let the light just, you know, just let it just hop out. Why we don't just go to yellow to red? Or yellow to green? Yeah, now speed up. Because God understands that there's oncoming traffic. Because he knows all things. He sees all things. He, you know, and so he knows what's up ahead even when we don't. So never get frustrated with God when he's when he has stopped or yielded you because there's a process that you're about to miss. You know, some of us. If we would have ran that yellow light instead of stopping, we would have missed that phone call that changed our day that said, your daddy gone. And we needed them 30, them three, them three, five seconds at that light to gather ourselves as we cry. Or we get that message that said, you got approved. Baby, you don't need to be driving. You up there swerving all over the road. You done got approved, but you're going to die before you sign the paperwork. So you still ain't going to get the house. And so we find ourselves getting frustrated when God comes in and he does pauses on our lives. But sometimes he pauses us to move us because we don't get, we don't, we won't move or allow him to do his work until we are stopped. You think about surgeries. How many of you had surgeries and they had you just wide awake? There's not many surgeries that are done where you are wide awake. Why? Why? Because he can do his best work when you sleep. He ain't got to wrestle with you fighting. He ain't got to wrestle with that mouth. With you yelling. Good, why? When they going to bring some ice chips? I'm so hungry. They talking about I couldn't eat past 12. It's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now I still can't. They ain't trying to hear all that. They got to be able to think with a clear mind to cut on you and to take out of the things that don't need to be in now. And so what do they do? They put a stop to you. You know, you see people or hear people say all the time that they just slipped away in their sleep. That means God had to stop them. They don't slip away. You Nobody slips away standing up. Yeah, I ain't never heard anybody be like, girl, you know, he just slipped away while he was standing on the wall. What? No. People slip away in their sleep. But what are you doing when you sleep? You're wrestling between different atmospheres sleep and so if we ever want to see God truly manifest who he who he desires to be in our life we first have to get out of our own way get out of our own head get out of our own pride get out of our own egos and say great is he that's in me than he that's in the world and no matter what comes my way I won't stop being who God called me to be I'm never going to adjust me so you can, can so you can enjoy the pretentious of me. See, some people can only handle you as pretend. They can't handle you whole. And so they try to keep you at the pretend level. So they come in your house and they say, oh, girl, it's cold. Let me turn the air up. 
But I got hot flashes. And it's my house. And if I want the answer on 69, this is my business. <coughs> it's not for you to come up here and tell me change the air so you can feel comfortable. I'm not changing who I am so you can be comfortable with who I have to pretend to remain. Because God can't use me that way. And so a lot of times God puts us in a situation where we have to decide. Are you going to let me use me or let me use you or, or man? Who you want that valid? Do you want validation or importation? Which one is most important to you? Do you want to be a person that impacts or a person who just has influence? You got a lot of people that just got influence. They ain't impact to nothing. There's no change. There's no action behind it. They just influence others. And guys, like, you want to do that? Like you, like you, you felt like I brought you through all of this for you to do that. And so then we find ourselves yet again frustrated with God. When is this package coming? You know I got to wear my outfit on Thursday. And here you go with the shipping label just getting shipped out. He says, still gonna come on time. If you live in my time, every one of your blessings will still always come on time. Because God's timing is always better. Always better than what we thought it could be. We time stuff, have the time the stuff don't work out. But when God times it, it always works out and it always works out on time and on purpose. So why would we want to control what he can do in us when he just wants us to move out of the way so he can be in us? Take off the mask. Take off who you're pretending to be. Take off the person that's always smiling. Take off the person that's always fake pretending like they're happy. Take off the person that's fake pretending like everything in their house is good. Take, take all of that off. God said, when you take that off and you get naked before me, and when my will is higher than yours for your life, that's when I know I can trust you. That's when I know I can use you when you stop coming up here with these fake fraudulent outfits. I gave you a clothing and a robe and you in booty shorts. But you want to know when God going to bless you with that husband. He, uh, uh, what's your faith say? Because your faith should have told you to, it should have stretched your hand and didn't tell you to put that mess back up in your closet and not bring it down. So what does your faith say about where you're headed? And so oftentimes I find myself having to faith check myself when I get frustrated with God and I feel like, God just ain't coming fast enough. I know you said in your word that it would, but it ain't coming fast enough for me. And God's like, be still and know that I am God. I'm in control and I am still God. And so when I get the revelation that that is what I should be doing, then it, 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 it lends him to be able to take residency in me. You know, some people who have the gift of, who have the, the gift of vision, most times you will see, hey, Charity, you girl, you're so anointed. Um, most times you'll see people who have the gift of vision. They, a lot of times their visions are done when they're asleep. But you think about why does God come to us in our dreams? Because we because at that point we vulnerable and can't do nothing about it. We can't control. Have you ever tried to control God in your dreams? Have you ever just swatted at God during your dreams? Like, I right, get out of here with all that guy. You know, he doesn't, he can only do his best work when we are our most humble selves. And so that's why a lot of times he loves to work on us in our sleep. We wake up. He said he can change a man's heart overnight because we got to wake up. And when he wakes us up, we are different. We are new. You know, you think about people that do hypnotizing and they hypnotize you and they say, okay, close your eyes and they get you to relax. And you're sitting there and, and, and they're relaxing you and you center your eyes on one thing and you go left, right, left, right. What are they doing? They are decreasing you to increase their spirit in you. And the next thing you know, they snap. And you wake up, you come out of your trance. And when you come out of your trance, they have the ability to do with you what they will. And how many of us are just like that? We're still in the trance and our heads come back and forth. Bing, 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 bing. 
And guys, like if you just got out the way and went sit down with yourself and we got yourself together and quit trying to get other folk together and focused on yourself and focused on submitting to me instead of submitting to people who can't even validate what I put in you. You know, you have so many people that are wanting others to validate in you what they didn't put there. See, no man can validate my anointing and my calling because he didn't give it to me. My grandma used to say, the joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it. And because the world didn't give it and the world can't take it, I don't have to be concerned about you coming over here trying to get it. Because the truth is, you can't even take it if you wanted to. Because you don't, you don't even have the capacity to hold what I'm carrying. You just trying to hold anything. And your knees buckling and your and your and your knees hurting. And guess what? You ain't got the capacity to do it. And then you frustrated. And when I was young, well, when you were. You ain't young no. Oh, when I was, that's good. But you're not no more. So get out of your your own way so that God can begin to do in you the work that He's already destined for your life. And so I'm getting out of my own way, giving God my heart and allowing him to do with it as he please. But I I will say this to you. It's not hard. It's not easy to give God your heart when you're still trying to hold on to the lock that keeps it keyed up, that keeps it jailed up. Some of us will do that. God, I'm going to give you my heart. He'd be like, where the key at for the lock? Oh, I forgot that. I forgot to give you that, God. No, you didn't. You didn't forget to give him that. You just didn't want to give him that because now he has more power to string you. And you don't want that. You want to be in control. You want to know that you are 100% in control of this situation and that nobody can come in and change it. But when you are walking with God, plans change daily. When you're walking with God, you look stupid often. When you're walking with God, oh, Lord. You struggle a lot. The enemy is trying to get me sleepy. He's like, huh, let me shut her mouth. Let me shut her mouth to get her out of the way. But you can't get me out of the way because everything that he's placed in me, I'm going to die before. I don't want to die with it in me. I'm not trying to get up to heaven and he opened me up with the inventory. He's like, girl, you still got them same shoes in your closet? I thought I, thought I told you to get you that, get out of the way. Oh, wait, you still got, you still got that? That that issue over there in that closet did not tell you to put that stuff up. And so, but when we are clouded and when we are active and when we are actively moving, we tire ourselves out. And then we're sitting there, laying there, trying to figure out when am I going to go to sleep? When, when can I rest? And my mind is racing. Well, your mind is racing because you won't submit. People that submit don't have minds racing. Their minds ain't doing nothing but sleeping. Your mind is racing because you're not being who God called you to be. Don't shoot the messenger. But I will say this. That one day who he has called you to be and who you become. Have to meet. Have to meet. Have to meet. Because that person needs your story and your ministry. They need it. My, you know, and so you want to rest. Rest in knowing that I'm God. I'm in control. And I am still God. I'm in control. That's all he's saying is I'm in control. I got this. I know. I know what it looked like. I know what they said. I know what they thought about you. But that's all right. It's okay about what they thought about you. It's okay. And so I'll leave you with this. When you begin to show up as yourself to God, he'll begin to show out in you. When you begin to show up as yourself in God, that is when he'll begin to show out in you. So I um, hope that you've enjoyed this message today on get out of the way. And, um, Hopefully you won't get out of the way because I didn't have to get out of the way my own stuff and go sit down somewhere. So hopefully you will go and get out of the way as I've had to get out of the way. And we're going to watch God move and do his best work and his best thing because we know that our father who are in heaven, hallowed be his name, that kingdom come, will do the absolute best that he's ever done for you in your life. If you just move out the way, 
He's blowing the horn. The light is green at the red light, but you're distracted by your phone. Put your phone down. Put your phone down. Erica Badu said, I can make you put your phone down. Put your phone down so that you are fully prepared and um, fully in, in, engulfed in the moment that, in which you live. So I love you. I pray this blessed you. I ask that you share it with as many people as you can. I'm going to share it. And I am super excited. And don't forget, if you have not gotten your copy of Purposeful Pain, my daughter is out. My baby is out. The prayer journal is out as well. If you don't have a copy, you need to get a copy in your hand. I promise it's going to change your life. I prayed over it for three days. I slept with it for two days. And I am so excited about what he's going to do. So I love you guys and continue to have a very amazing Happy Father's Day. I love all of the fathers out there, especially my father, uh, Michael Grimes, and even my baby's father. Uh, you know, shout out to him. Uh, Happy Father's Day. And I ask that you just continue to be great, make today special, and never settle for safe. So I love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.